encourage leaders to get feedback all the time. Coffee's for closers only. So we've established my proposal to stand in principle. Now we're just haggling over price. <laughs> Let's see how much we're going for on eBay. I mean, it's the same as Dunkin' Donuts. It costs 15 times the price. Welcome to Impact Pricing, the podcast where we discuss pricing, value, and the inherent relationship between them. I'm Mark Stiving, and our guest today is Amy Riley, and here are three things you want to know about Amy before we start. She's been running Shoop Consulting Group for 20 years, so I guess that means it's successful. Uh, she has a forthcoming book called The Courage of a Leader, and, uh, and I find it fascinating that she is, or at least was, a pregnancy coach. Uh, welcome, Amy. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I'm glad to be here. Okay, just for the listener's benefit, we tried this a week ago. We had so many technical problems. So today is going to go perfectly, but there may be some inside jokes. We'll try not to tell them as we go through. Um, <laughs> Take two, everyone. <laughs> Take two. So how did you get into pricing? We know you're not really in pricing, but how did you get into pricing? Um, I I love that you are having me on your impact pricing podcast, Mark. And we do believe that there is a tie. No, I would not say that I am in pricing, but I am in the business of leadership development and encouraging every leader to understand the unique value that they bring to their work, to their teams, to their relationships to every interaction. So I'm about helping leaders distinguish what is their um, leadership legacy or the purpose of their leadership. So I, I love that. I have to tell you that several years ago, in my mind, I, I almost wrote a book called The Value of You, but I know I wrote a couple uh -huh. of podcasts or blogs about the value of you. And it's like, well, yeah. how do you how do you know your own value? Because we think about the value of products all the time. Yeah. But each one of us as an individual and we sell our time, we sell our soul to somebody. Uh, and so what's it worth? What's it? What's the value of that? Um, OK, yes. it's OK. Your, your turn. Go. OK. Yes. And there can be something slightly tricky here because the value that we bring is inherent in our strengths. And sometimes where we are innately strong, we don't recognize it. Mark, because we just show up and we think in that organized way, right? Or we're able to streamline something or we're able to connect the knots and bring people together in a way. And we do that naturally. So I've worked with so many leaders who don't recognize how much value they bring because they're so readily able to provide that value. So I tell them specifically to look at where are you strong? Right. You know, it's a strength of yours. People come to you for that because you're good at it. And then where are you interested? Where do you have that passion? Right. And I know, Mark, the value you bring is around pricing and you're great at it and you've been passionate about it <laughs> for a long, uh, so, long time. <laughs> so what I love about what you just said is that um, when you work with a solo printer, when I work with solopreneurs, this becomes so obvious because solopreneurs undervalue themselves dramatically. Yeah. And I think I, I never thought about why other than a self-confidence problem, but I think what you just said resonates a lot in that we only have one mind. And so we think we're like everybody else. And the fact that I can do something so easily, everybody else can do this so easily. Yes. And, and that isn't necessarily a true statement. And so now the question becomes, how do we tease out what we're great at? And, and, and so I mentioned solopreneurs because I work with them and I, you know, I know a lot of them and I see the, the lack of self-confidence they often have. But the exact same thing is true with people who are working in companies because this is just you and your own mind. So how do we help people figure out what these what these strengths are and help them realize that everybody isn't like that? Yes. So I re I encourage folks to reflect. Right? Re reflect every day on what felt natural. Where did you feel like you were in the groove? Where did you feel like things were clicking? Where did time pass by quickly? 
right? You got engaged mm. in that task and all of a sudden you come up from it and 90 minutes have gone by and you didn't realize that's probably an indication that you're working in a strength area where you provide particular value. So reflecting on where you feel strong and then let's also make some notes about where do we produce great results, right? So in that team meeting, there was um, discontent, there was tension, right? And you were able to facilitate a conversation that allowed people to share their views, find their common ground, and get aligned on some aspects of the work. Make note of that, right? Hey, I, I created value there. When your team or you puts out a deliverable, right? What kind of value uh, are you creating? Um, I know we, we've talked to Mark about like, what problem are you solving in that moment? And what is that worth to the people around you and to your organization? So just, you know, kind of open up a, a, a document or an Evernote or <laughs> a piece of paper and a journal and make those notes along the way. And then you begin what to see that pattern. Yeah. What I find fascinating is as you speak, I think about how almost everything you say applies directly to products as well. Right? <laughs> and, and so products and people are so similar. We um, have we found think this about, time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, th we think about those results. We think about those problems that we're solving. And that's exactly how I teach people to figure out what's the value of a product. Mm -hmm. Right. So what's the problem you're solving? What's the result that someone's going to expect? And and then turn that into profit or dollars to the company. Yeah. Um, so, so I think people could do this the exact same way with one huge exception. OK. And that is self-honesty. I know when I was younger, I would lie to myself all the time. How do you teach someone not to do that? Yes. Uh, encourage leaders to get feedback all the time. And there's, of course, different ways that we can do this. You know, I'm certified in some 360 degree feedback assessments where there can be a formal process. Um, I'm also leading a leadership development program right now where we just encouraged everybody at the beginning of the program, talk to five to seven people. How am I doing with my leadership? Where could I be doing better? Right. What do you what do you like? What do you wish that I could shift and have those real conversations and open up that dialogue? Um, and with the leaders in this program, with all leaders, right, we don't want feedback conversations to be one and done. Oh, I got this information. Now I know what to work on. And once I've worked on that, it's it's all set. But keep that dialogue going, you know, in a in a in the vein of continuous improvement, because uh, lots of things that we do as leaders communicating interacting, inspiring, engaging, right? Those, those are things that we can always be working on because when we work with people and people are different, it's nuanced. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And we're forever adapting. So I want to go back to self delusional Mark, if I may, uh, okay. because I love making fun of my old self. It, it's it just as easy, but self delusional Mark would have listened to feedback and anybody who said something good, they are brilliant. Oh, and anybody who said something bad, talk about stupid people. I mean, why would I ever listen to that person? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and the question is, how do you get someone not to be delusional? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is, is there a trick? I'm not even sure how I got out of that mode, but I, actually mm. I can give you a guess as to how I got out of it. But do you have a trick? Uh, yeah, I, I I mean, Mark, I'm lucky in the work that I do that the the for the vast majority of leaders that I'm working with, they care and they want to do better. Actually, that would be the access point. Right. What's important to you? What are your values? What do you want to achieve? with your leadership in your work, in your career, and then beginning to tie that uh, developmental feedback to what is important to that person. Because if that commitment is big enough, then they'll open their hearts and minds to the enhancements, the opportunities for improvement. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And, and one of the things I learned in my career along the way is that if I put the goal above everything else, 
then everything else starts to become easier, right? I don't have to, I don't have to internalize the bad feedback. It's okay. Got it. You said this, but, but it may be true. It may not be true. Does that help us get to our goal? Is it in service of this bigger picture commitment? Oh, exactly. I love that you said that, Mark, because, uh, you know, I work with leaders to distinguish their leadership legacy. What is the bigger picture purpose and commitment of your leadership? And when we're looking to that leadership legacy for guidance, then we act bigger and bolder than, than any of our normal human considerations, uh, you know, might hold us back. Uh, so yeah, that when there's that commitment, it can really pull us forward. Yeah. And, and then if I can add one more, yeah. uh, I remember a mentor taught me this. And when, when he said it to me, it was like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And I've said this to so many people I've coached ever since then. And that is, do you want to be right or mm. effective? Yeah. And there's such a huge difference, right? I can fight to be right, but what I really want to do is make make sure we hit the goal, whatever that happens to be. Yes, yes. And of course, yeah, I love that. And of course, it's human nature, right? So, so folks out there, if you do find yourself in those moments where you're fighting to be right instead of fighting to be effective, do give yourself some compassion because we're human beings and that's a human tendency, especially when we care. Right. We care. We've been working for something. We've been advocating for X. We see how it can go this way. Right. And then there's divergent views or something else comes up. Yeah. And we got to regroup and think about, all right, how do we be effective in this moment rather than stay the course with that idea I knew was right at one point? <laughs> I think that's brilliant. And, you know, I never even thought about the one I'm about to tell you, and I've never written it down, but it's, it follows on with that one. And that is, I think the world changed when I realized it was okay to be wrong. Ah, yes. Yes. I, I work with so well, I've seen so many leaders that are afraid to admit they made a mistake. They were wrong. We're going to need to change our tactics and our path forward. And I got to tell you, every team member I've ever talked to, we really, really respect those leaders that say, hey, oops, you know, I, I messed up. We thought this was the way to go. We've got new information now. We're going to go in another direction. Or oops, I messed up. Like I missed that thing. I'm sorry I let you all down with that. We really yeah. respect that. And if you think about it, one of the, the positive words we hear about companies all the time is we made a pivot. So yeah. what does a pivot actually mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're saying that might be fancy speak for. I was wrong. We might have made an error and now we are changing, <laughs> changing our ways. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, okay. and our world is dynamic and changing and we're learning, right? And we make the best decisions that we can based on the information that we have. And it might cause us to need to pivot when we get the next round of information. That's exactly right. Exactly. Okay. So last time we were on, we had our tech problems. You made a suggestion, which I internalized and loved, but you haven't said it yet today. So oh. you're going to say that now. Right. And I'm that is what this is. Okay. I want to know uh, uh, the, the easy trick for people to learn where their strengths are. Oh, okay. And what you said to me. Well, do you want to try to guess what you said or do you want me to tell you what you said? Tell me what I said. What you said was, what do people ask you to do? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What do others come to you for? Right. Where did they get you involved? Yes. Right. Cause they and, subconsciously or consciously know you're great at it. <laughs> and, and they know they're going to get you the answer. They're going to, you're going to solve the problem. There's something going on there. And so if we pay attention to when people come ask us things, um, it helps us understand when, what we do well, what other people rely on us for. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, okay. Got it. So now this is supposed to be a pricing podcast. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's talk about pricing people for a second. I, 
am a typical pricing person, was a typical pricing person, uh, very technically, logically oriented, not super social, not super people oriented. How do we learn to become more people oriented? Because I feel like that's important to becoming a great leader. Yes. Um, well, so one is knowing your strengths, right? Are your strengths people-oriented? If your strengths are not people-oriented, you can surround yourself by people, um, with people who are people-oriented, right? And can role model that and you can learn. Um, I suggest a lot of, um, you know, self-reflection, right? Where was that a positive interaction? Um, I mean, lots of times you could say by coming back to that commitment, Mark, like I've got this commitment in the bigger picture. Are we moving towards that commitment? Because often if we're, if we're shooting for something big, then we need to work through and with other people. And are we able to make progress? If not, ask, right? Ask people what's working, what's not working. What do you want me to keep doing? What do you want me to do differently? Um, I also have folks talk about, um, again, there's different assessments that you can do like DISC or Myers-Briggs to understand your preferences and your natural tendencies for communicating, for interacting, for approaching pro problems or work situations. Or you can just have a conversation. Just have a conversation amongst your team and find out from your team leaders and from your other leader colleagues, how do you like to communicate? Are you a big picture talker? Do you like to get into the details? Right? Do you like to have some chit chat before we get down to work? <laughs> right? That's often something for the folks who are self-proclaimed <laughs> not good at people skills, right? They go straight to talking about the business. You might have some folks that get rubbed a little bit the wrong way by that. They want to have some connection. They want to have some chit chat about the weekend first. Looks like you're going to say something, Mark. I am. Uh, so do you remember when we started the podcast today? I said, we got on the phone and I said, are you ready? Let's hit record. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yes. Um, so, so, you know, the thing that, that keeps jumping out at me from everything you say is being open to feedback. All right. Yeah. I, I think if we can open ourselves up to listening to people and, um, and so I've gotten myself in this mode and maybe this is right. Maybe this is wrong. I don't know, but I listen to everybody's feedback. And then I step back and I say, I get to choose if that was right or wrong. I get to yes. choose if I want to do something about that or not do something about that, but yes. I don't just dismiss it without listening to it first. Yes. Yes. We do want to be authentically open to it. Right. And knowing, I think often in the conversation, if we give ourselves permission to just hear it and understand it to the best of our ability and know that we'll consider it later and decide whether we're going to implement any changes or not, that can help us be more present in the conversation and really get what the other person is saying. And then, yeah, authentically look at it. And maybe they don't see some of the interactions that you have. Right? And they don't get to see the behavior that they're talking about. Maybe you decide, oh, that's really not quite aligned with my brand and who I am and what I'm about. Um, yet, no, it is someone's perception. Oh, and Mark, sometimes when folks get feedback, we talk about the difference between, do I have a skill question here or do I have a PR question here? Because sometimes mm. we have the skill and we're demonstrating it, but there's a misunderstanding about why we're doing it or how we're doing it. Or sometimes they don't have exposure to our full work days, especially now when so many people are working virtually or hybrid. Right? They don't, they don't see or hear the conversations where I am advocating for my team or whatever the thing is. Right. So sometimes you need to com communicate, share more overtly about what you're doing, about what you're working on. Uh, so sometimes it's, um, yeah, a, a perception or a PR issue 
I've called it. And sometimes like, okay, there, there is a skill to develop or to practice. Yep. And so it turns out that when we sell products, it's always about the customer's perception of value. There we and go. so when we're playing the role of a leader, it's always about the people around us and their perception of yeah. what we're doing and what our value is. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of value, besides entertaining podcast hosts, when you talk to them, what are your strengths? <laughs> My strengths are uh, facilitating, coaching, meeting people where they're at. So when you said, let's dive right in, my preference would be, let's chat for a few more minutes. But I'm like, all right, great. I'm going to meet Mark. Where is that? Let's go do it. <laughs> let's dive in. Yeah. Yes. I, I try to do that, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Well, there's, 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 there's some places where, where folks are, um, easier, um, they're able more easily to adapt to the other style. Right. And then there's some places where you might find me more rigid. Okay. I want to, um, sell your value here. And so how do we do that? We say, what are your strengths and your strengths are your features. We'll put it that way. Yeah. And so what problems do your features solve? So, so when I think of your strengths, what, what problems are you solving for people? Yes. Yeah. So the strengths of facilitating, coaching, speaking, who, and you can help me fine tune this Mark. I have leaders that come to me that are overwhelmed too much on their plate. Don't know where to prioritize. I don't know how to strategically best use the time that they have, right? And through coaching and mentoring, right? Some, some suggesting some things, them to react to. Um, we work through and find practices and mindsets that work for them so that they can be more effective, more efficient. Nice. That can show so, up in a variety of ways, yeah. So I'm going to restate the problem as simply as I can. And you can tell yeah. me if this was right or not. Um, one problem is leaders are overwhelmed. Another problem is leaders lack confidence in knowing what they need to do next. Yep. Yep. So these are two, these are two real problems. Yep. Right? And then I have okay, organizations. So now, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, now I come work with you. I've got these problems. I come work with you. What's the result I might expect? Yes. And this is, this is where I think a lot of folks in my line of work struggle, right? Because the, the results can look different. Uh, but they would, be, they would be able to be expressed in terms of um, increased influence, increased productivity, Right. I've, I've had leaders be able to estimate like how much time was lost on the team due to drama or, you know, not being able to have frank feedback conversations or getting wound up in conflict that's not healthy conflict and giving them and their teams the skills to communicate and to have effective conflict, being able to talk about being X percent more productive. And then whatever their thing is, right, whether they bring products to market um, or they launch marketing campaigns, right, being able to do more on time, more on budget, um, more, you know, better results uh, from their deliverables. Nice. And, and so I would say, if I'm going to re rephrase what you just said, I would say the results are we will make your team more efficient and more effective. And we will make you more confident in what you Lovely. do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so now assuming those things are true, which I believe wholeheartedly, <laughs> if we were doing my version of value and I'm trying to sell a product, how much money did we just make the company because we did that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. This and, is... and obviously, I was going to say, obviously it depends on the role of the leader. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it, this this really could be worth a lot. Um, there's a leadership program I'm involved in that is going to wrap up at the end of next month. And we will be working with them between now and then. They picked a project to apply their learnings and the frameworks and the practices uh, that they've been learning throughout the program to that specific project. And we are going to have them looking at what has been the impact of that project right? in numbers, right? So you're changing this process or you're introducing a new policy or you're developing the team to think more strategically, whatever your project is, what's going to be the result of that and really pushing them to get to numbers, and this is the fourth year we're doing this program. The numbers blow their executive leaders out of the water every year. It's really nice. fun. And I get to sit back and be, and be so proud. Right? But when you begin to think about your impact and the ripple effects of that, um, it's quite astonishing. Okay, so we have a bunch of pricing people listening right now, maybe product people, but but I will make two things, two analogies for you. Number one, what we just talked about has everything to do with your product, right? So what's the problem you're solving? Uh, what's the solution that you have? What's the result they would expect? And then how much money are you going to make your customer when they do that? The other thing I want you to pull away is this is this absolutely true for you and your career. Right. So everything you're doing is solving problems for the customer. And the, in this case, the customer happens to be your company. Um, and so what are those problems? What kind of results are you achieving? And then how much money are you making the company? And yeah. as you can quantify that, get better and better at that, then you can earn a raise. You can earn a promotion. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keep actively writing that resume. Right. And we've all been told in that resume, put the bottom line results that you achieved. Right. Get it into get it into numbers. Be be constantly writing that. Know what you're worth. I love it, Mark. Yeah. Awesome. Amy, I love talking to you. This is just fun. Um, <laughs> this has been good. really fun for me and really valuable to have you translate my words today into bottom line pricing language. Oh, no, uh, yeah, it's been no really worries. fun to see the ties between our worlds. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to contact you, how can they do that? Uh, the website is the easiest way, courageofaleader.com. And uh, you can find The Courage of a Leader on LinkedIn as well. Nice. And when's your book going to be out? Um, it's actually out. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually out. Um, my author coach would be telling me that I should be writing a new one. But yeah, The Courage of a Leader, How to Inspire, Engage, and Get Extraordinary Results is out. You can find it. Um, on Amazon and some other places. You can also find all the links on the website to the Kindle paperback and audiobook version. All right. Everybody go read that book. And to our listeners, thank you so much for your time today. If you enjoyed this, would you please leave us a rating and a review? And finally, if you have any questions or comments about the podcast or pricing in general, feel free to email me, mark at impactpricing.com. Now, go make an impact.